So right after the class, there were some people right who asked about uh, why is I mean for a complex matrix right apparently, I just assume that some of these things are kind of generally known. Okay, so I'll I'll just show those things within kind of five minutes. Okay, and then we'll kind of move ahead, move ahead. Some of these things I sometimes assume, you know, and uh, so it's like saying that you no, know, especially the doubt is like if you have a complex matrix, right? Then how does it work out? So it's like this. So it's so just exactly similar to the way that it works out when you have a real matrix. So R, uh, okay, when you have when you have a covariance, right? R, you can write it as some XX Hermitian, right? If it is a complex matrix, okay. Which is the form of R, right? Whenever you say it's a it's a covariance, it comes as XX Hermitian. Therefore, clearly R Hermitian is is equal to R, right? Because R Hermitian will again give you give you XX Hermitian, which means that okay, because of this reason, it is of course normal right? because A Hermitian is equal to A Hermitian A that will that will get satisfied, right? Because R R Hermitian is equal to R Hermitian R right? is equal to R square. Right, so so in that sense, we know for a fact that even if you have if you have the complex type, right, it doesn't matter. I mean, the uh, this one that uh, the spectral theorem for say uh, this one normal matrices and all will hold. So which means that R is uh, unitarily diagonalizable. Right, this follows. So from this, it follows that R is unitarily diagonalizable. Then coming to the coming to the eigenvalues being real, right. If you look at uh, let's say let's say that if you take uh, if you, if you take an eigenvector x, right, again it can be complex. So we know that right, this will be some lambda times x. Again, lambda can also be complex. Let us say suppose we assume that lambda can be complex. Uh, then what you can do is you know if you take R x, uh, the whole Hermitian, right? That will be x Hermitian, R Hermitian, which on the right hand side will become lambda star. Right, because lambda is a scalar, and then x Hermitian. Right, and then uh, then what you can do is you can now multiply. Uh, now, okay, you know that R Hermitian is R, right? Because we showed it right there. So, which then means that x Hermitian R is equal to lambda star x Hermitian. Now, the simple trick that you play is you know <coughs> multiply the uh, so you multiply the multiply on the right by x. So this gives you lambda star. X Hermitian X. Now, but R X is lambda X, right? That comes from here. So you get X Hermitian. So lambda I can pull it out. It's a scalar. So X is equal to lambda star X Hermitian X. Or this means lambda minus lambda star into X Hermitian X. It is equal to zero. But then because because we started by saying that X is an eigenvector. X Hermitian X, right? It can't be zero, right? This is not zero because it's an eigenvector, which then forces lambda minus lambda star to be equal to zero, or which means lambda is equal to lambda star, right? So hence lambda is real. Okay. And then the other thing was okay. Well, uh, then another thing is if you uh, right in general, right? If you if you take some x Hermitian and multiply, okay, need not be an eigenvector. Suppose you take R x, right? If x is a covariance, then this can this you can write as some y y Hermitian into x. Now, uh, since right, this is a scalar, <coughs> call uh, call z as y Hermitian. Uh, z will be a scalar now. Call that as y Hermitian x, right? Now. X Hermitian Y will then be see, <coughs> yeah, right. So X Hermitian Y will then be Z star. So this will be like Z star Z, which is equal to magnitude Z square, which will be a number which is always kind of right larger than or equal, greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so which is why we say that this is a PSD. So all that you must have done for real, right? Actually, just goes through in a straightforward manner. Then now, right, based on this condition, choose X to be an eigenvector. Choose x as the x as eigenvector of R, eigenvector of R. Then we know that x Hermitian uh, R is R x is this turns out to be x Hermitian R x is lambda x, right? And uh, since we know that in general, right, for any x, x Hermitian R x is, is a number greater than or equal to zero. So then this means that that this number ought to be greater than or equal to zero. Or lambda times x Hermitian x should be a number greater than or equal to zero. 
but since this is this cannot be 0 this norm of x it is an Eigen vector therefore, lambda is then going to say greater than or equal to 0. So, right which is the reason why why we had assumed all of this yesterday right when we did we said the Eigen values will be real they will be a greater than or equal to 0 or it is PSG unitarily diagonalized well all this all this right comes from comes from the simple background right. And then of course, somebody was asking why do we choose uh, right based upon the Eigen values right why do we put significance in terms of when we you know pick the significant Eigen vectors right why is it that Eigen values are chosen for that. The answer is that after all right when you do when you do a diagonalization right. Uh, so, when you have this Eigen vectors, so these Eigen vectors are actually orienting towards maximum variations right. So, for example, in that is say ellipsoidal kind of thing that I had shown if you are if you had a distribution like that in a kind of a 2D space right that it means that the maximum variance is probably along one direction and then orthogonal to that there is another spread. So, these Eigen vectors right orient uh, because of the fact that they actually they actually represent variations right it is a variance correct when you kind of look at uh, look at lambda it, it represents the variance of the covariance matrix. So, therefore, it is kind of right telling that the variance is maximum in this direction followed by another whatever the second maximum in the second direction and maybe third and so on right. So, you, so you have this order and the whole idea behind doing this Eigen value Eigen vector sort of a decomposition is to be able to capture those those uh, say directions along which the variances are kind of maximum. And, uh, and, then the, and, then the, and then the idea is that if you now attach significance if you want to compute what is the significance of that variance that comes through lambda right. The orientation comes via the Eigen vector the, uh, the actual significance of you know how much is the spread comes from your Eigen values and therefore, you choose the Eigen values to kind of make up your mind as to how many Eigen vectors to choose and which ones to choose and so on. Then there was one more doubt as to how do you how do you put the um, how do you fix how many Eigen vectors uh, do you want it is very hard to tell ok. There is no there is no sort of a single rule that says that uh, no universally that these many Eigen vectors are enough ok or uh, these many significant Eigen vectors are enough you have to right for each application it can change for some applications you may need like I told you yesterday when we had to do this kind of a uh, phase location right uh, kind of a detection we had to use fewer Eigen vectors because the problem was was one of you know trying to separate something like a background patch from a from a phase patch. The idea was not to reconstruct a phase that well it was just to use minimum as minimum vectors right on both sides for the background as well as for the face and be, be able to tell uh, tell that you know tell that patch apart whether it belongs to background or foreground. So, there in fact, you do not want to use to use you know too many Eigen vectors because, because if you start using too many of them then your say reconstruction capability actually goes up in which case you will be you will find it hard to separate a background from a foreground. So, so you have to use the notion of sparsity use fewer Eigen vectors, but if you are looking at a recognition problem something like you want to identify somebody then maybe you know maybe it makes then more sense to uh, it makes sense to use more number of Eigen vectors there because you want to reconstruct properly and then you want to know whether right you got you got the you got the person's uh, face correct or not. So, there right you may need more. So, all of this is totally application dependent there is no um, there are no general rules as to know when to stop or where to stop right. So, people have different ways of kind of say defining it some people might say that look at these look at the highest Eigen value then go down till about a fraction of that you know somebody may say 5 percent 10 percent 20 percent all of that is completely in your hands ok depending on the application. But uh, you know what if you see this image on the left ok this is an input image and then there is something like an output image on the right ok ignore the one on the right first. Now, if you see this image right what do you think this image is? of course, it is hard to guess right it is actually the you know image of the rim of a wheel ok. This was a problem that somebody somebody approached us long ago 10 years ago. So, right so, so they said that when they manufacture uh, rims of wheel no. So, what happens is sometimes right those rims may have faults in them there could be small kinds of can say, say defects. So, for example, I do not know whether you can make out, but there is a there is a there is a defect there like there is a there is a defect there there is a defect here there is a defect here and so on ok. There is a there is a defect I think somewhere here right. So, so you have the small small kinds of things which are very hard to I mean that you have to strain your eyes to see those see those kinds of kind of see defects. So, they said right can we kind of build uh, something right that can actually identify those small little small little see defects and at the same time you should be able to ignore other things you know which are kind of more or less uh, more or less uh, no more or less kind of what you say uh, you know. So, something like this right this pattern that you see there it this looks like a slightly darkish pattern right on that image you cannot classify that as a defect ok because that is some pattern that is running on the wheel. But some of these other things for example, this might be kind of classified as a this one defect right and things like that ok. Now, what they said was uh, now in this case 
what we did was we tried everything right like let's say anyone would do we tried edge detection right whatever okay we tried typically okay that, that's what you would do some kind of you know sort of a thresholding whether you know that will kind of tell this apart but what happens is if you set the set the threshold too low then even things that are that are not actually uh, actually defect will show up and so many of them will show up it's again the same problem like in faces you know there's one face you don't want to show there are four faces similarly there's one defect or if there are three defects you can't claim that there are seven of them okay again then the whole you know right uh, what do you call the whole significance of your algorithm gets lost and at the same time if you if you set a threshold that is too tight then what happens is you might actually miss miss a defect which is which is uh, which is very expensive i mean you can't afford to miss a defect so what do you think we did right on the right there is a sort of a result right which looks pretty so what you do is you know so you kind of look at this image and because they have already pointed to you pointed out to you which are the defective parts right so what you do is you know you take a small patch okay around this like for example you might take a patch like that which could be whatever right the, the size and all you have to fix them I mean, these are all sort of ad hoc okay but uh, let's say 16 cross 16 or something and then and then when you get a move across right you will get several such 16 cross 16 patches now what you do is you you go through this and then you take the second image again look at all those regions that are clean okay go through all those patches and now what you have is something like that uh, like sort of you know a data matrix that you have wherein wherein you have all the all the sub images or the patches that that sort of say represent represent actually clean data now you can now because of the fact that you can have those overlapping patches and because they are small in size you can get you can get 100 i mean easily around let's say 5 10000 10, in fact more right depending upon the size of the image you can even get get more numbers then what you do is you compute a covariance matrix out of that then after you compute the covariance then you again again look at the significant eigen vectors and then what you now do is you come back and here right what now you now you go back revisit every patch right in a kind of a moving window fashion and then for every patch right, you, you try to see how well you can get your u hat because you're going to not reconstruct it exactly you're going to throw away a lot of eigen vectors take only the significant ones and then when you compute this u minus u hat norm right the moment the patch lands on lands on something right which has a defect right you will automatically see that this right error error will kind of go up it's very similar to what i said yesterday with respect to locating a face versus a non face right so when you land in those so when your window lands in those only thing is what might happen is when you move around right you will get not just one window you'll get multiple windows because that patch could be that small little uh, defect right could be anywhere within the patch so when you're moving there and you don't know where it is right so when you move you will get kind of multiple multiple boxes around it and that is typically removed by what is called a non maxima suppression that is uh, something out of this but that is what you do in order to be able to be able to you know merge all of them into a single box i mean you don't want to flag you know seven boxes when there is actually one okay and uh, that is how you do and i know it and and incidentally right, what i wanted to point out was this is called an eigen filter by the way and eigen filter is is not very kind of well known at all okay if you look at books right there's hardly anybody that talks about eigen filters but then uh, the the fact is actually eigen filters are very good in fact there was another problem that uh, that we solved again using eigen filters after we after we succeeded with this right there was another semiconductor wafer chip right where they where they wanted to see whether the whether the wafer had leaked and that leak right if you look at that image it will be very hard to make out with your with your uh, with your uh, you know ordinary eyes right it's very hard to see where that you know if you want to see the contour of the leak it's very hard it just kind of see merges with the with whatever with that is a substrate and it's very hard to tell it's a very soft edge okay and uh, you know anything that you do will sort of fly you know will flag so many contours on that image and again what we what we did was we learnt the background or whatever is supposedly clean and then and then again right use this kind of a window based approach comes to compute computed the reconstruction error and that flag so what i want to say is tomorrow right any time you encounter situations of this kind where there are where there are say defects that are very subtle okay i can filters are very good i mean at that okay just that right they are not basically that that very well known i mean it's kind of surprising that people don't seem to use them that much okay so the, so okay now why 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 i wanted to point uh, this out is because so the pca right on the one hand you can use it as a benchmark then second as i said uh, you know you can use it for dimensionality reduction third as i said if you want to if you want to see right i mean uh, do some kind of you know uh, some kind of a graphical this one a visualization uh, that is three then fourth uh, right what it has been used for uh, one of the most uh, talked about uh, thing is for face recognition then phi is uh, this eigen filter okay and there are so many others also okay but at least i mean at these many so in that sense right uh, in that sense 
PCA, right? You will, I mean, right? You would hopefully have have understood the significance of actually doing a PCA, not simply from a, from a unitary transform point of view, but uh, but also right from the from the point of view. And in fact, right, if you look at pattern recognition, learning on all that, right, you know, which came later, is all fundamentally based on this. Right, a covariance has so much structure that right, anything when you say data mining, when you say right, learning from data, all of that, right, if you really trace back, right. It is all. It all starts here. Right? There is so much, so much hidden. There is so much pattern hidden, right, across data. That if you can, if you can only extract those patterns, then you can start start doing wonderful things.